Welcome back. So now we're going to move on to some forecasting techniques. And before we get too complicated, we're going to use what are called baseline or benchmark methods. So these are really simple forecasting approaches that should always be the first thing that you try with a time series. Now these methods can be used on their, in their own right as a forecasting method, but more commonly they're used as a statistical baseline. They're used to, um, as a baseline to make sure that any complex method that you try to use is better than this baseline method. And if your complex method can't do as well as one of these really simple approaches, then you shouldn't be using it. So it enforces um, keeping it simple, which I, which I really like and I think is really important for forecasting. Um, and quite often in uh, complex academic papers on forecasting, you see that they've missed this step in having a simple baseline model. So they have a very complicated neural network model but you don't know how it compares to a very simple um, statistical baseline. So we're going to look at four methods. And um, we're going to look at just taking the average. We're going to look at a method called um, naive forecast one. We're going to look at um, and then two variations of naive forecast, the seasonal naive and the naive forecast with drift. So we've got some standard imports um, at the start of this notebook with um, from pandas, matplotlib, and stats models. Um, we've got a little helper function that I've created here called preds as series, and that's just um, a little function to help us quickly convert numpy arrays into um, uh, pandas data frames with a date time index so we can plot it easily. So I've done that for you. You don't need to worry about that. So we're going to work with the ED arrival data set again. Um, so just a reminder, that's uh, monthly data um, for adult arrivals at an emergency department between April 2009 and May 2017. So let's read that in and just check um, the minimum and maximum dates are expected. Uh, so 2009-04, that's correct and 2017.05 is the maximum, that is also correct. And Pandas is happy that our monthly frequency is MS. Let's just uh, refresh our memory of what that looks like. Um, so we can see that there is an increasing trend over time. And we know from our previous exploration of this time series that there is some monthly seasonality within it. So again, uh, because this is monthly data, we know that there was value from adjusting it, making a calendar adjustment to that data. So because some days, some months have more days than, in, than others, um, you get some additional noise within the data set, within the total number of arrivals. So what we're gonna do is a calendar adjust, adjustment. We're gonna divide through by the days in the month to get our arrival rate. And if you've forgotten exactly what I'm doing here, please go back to the previous lecture to understand how that works. So let's plot that and what we get is the slightly smoother time series. So this is a better time series for forecasting. So on to our, our baseline methods. Um, so a very common baseline method, which isn't always the best, but is very common, is to take the average of the time series. Um, so this is basically the sum of all your historical observations divided by the number of historical observations you've seen. And that gives you your mean. Um, so the forecast is then um, a flat value. It is the mean of your series projected in, into the future. Um, so if your historical observation at time one, you call that Y, y1 um, and then at time 2 y2 um, then you can represent the time series as a series of observations um, 1 through t as y1 y2 through to, to yt um, so mathematically you would write that down as um, your forecast which is yt plus your forecast horizon h 
given this time series is the mean of that of that time series. And instead of having this y1, y2, y2, what you tend to say is um, yt plus h given t is the mean of your time series. So if you ever see it written down mathematically, that might look confusing. Um, what it means is that we're taking the mean of our values here and we have a flat forecast function. So we are projecting that mean, we are extrapolating that mean beyond the end of our historical values. And this is what you'll see in a, in a, in a book on forecasting. That's all it means. Now to help you do this quickly, Pencord has put together some simple classes um, for baseline forecasts in a package we've called Forecast. Um, so to, to use that package, um, you'll need your um, Jupyter Notebook or your Python code within um, the same directory as our, our folder called Forecast. And inside Forecast, you've got some Python modules. So for example, you've got a baseline module. If we double click on that, um, and you'll see that contains these forecasting methods. So if we scroll down, uh, we've got a forecasting method for Naive1, and that's just a class, and you can look how that works if you like. Lots of comments there. We've got Seasonal Naive, uh, when we've got the average, and this is, this is what we're going to use to start off with. Um, and it gives some references where you can look how, up how this works, and, and you can look at the code as well if you're interested. So in order to use a mean forecast, uh, what you can you can do this yourself, of course, you can write your own code. But for convenience, what you could do is import the average class from the forecast.baseline module. Very, very simple to use. Um, all you need to do is three things. Create an instance of that class. So you have um, um, a forecast object. You need to call the fit method and pass in the historical data. And in the case of average, all that is doing is taking the average of that data. Um, and then you call the predict method, which is your forecast function, and pass in your chosen forecasting horizon. So for example, here we want to pre forecast 12 months into the future. And remember, predict is just a flat forecast function in this case. It's, it's extrapolating that mean beyond the end of the time series. So here are those three steps in code. So from the forecast.baseline, module we're going to import average to create an instance of the average co uh, class that's really straightforward so we've got an object we've called avg and that equals average you don't need to pass in any parameters to that that class and then we're going to fit the historical data by calling the fit method and passing in our training data which is the arrival rate and then we're going to call the predict method choosing a prediction horizon which is um, just by dot predict and then horizon equals whatever you would like it to be. In this case, it's 12. And that returns um, a NumPy array, which we're storing in um, a variable called average preds. So let's run that and take a look. So here's our NumPy array. It's uh, a vector of length 12. Um, and you can see every single value within it is the same. Um, and that's because it's a flat forecast function. Um, so let's visualize that data in a plot. So we can see here our training data, which is our um, arrival rate data. And then this is our forecast of that time series over the next 12 months. So a question here is, do you think this is a good baseline for our data? So perhaps before we, we, we draw any hasty conclusions, we'll have a look at a few different forecasting methods and uh, see if we think those produce any a better forecast conceptually. Um, so I, where I would encourage you to start is rather than using the average is to use what's called naive forecast one. Um, so this is from a family of methods that simply brings forward previous values within the time series. Um, so the naive forecast simply looks at your most current um, historical value, the last value in your time series, and extrapolates that forward. Um, so you'll see that written like this in mathematical textbooks. 
So my forecast, my prediction of y at time t um, plus whatever forecast horizon I'm going over, given um, my time series up to point t, just simply equals yt, the final value within my time series. Um, so again, we have a very simple helper class to just to make that forecast for us. It's called naive1. That's contained within the forecast um, dot baseline module. So we'll import that. Exactly the same three steps. Um, we create a naive one object. Again, there's no parameters to put in to pass in here. There's no hyperparameters for this method. Um, we're going to fit our arrival rate data to it, and we're going to predict the next 12 months, storing those predictions in a in a variable called nf1 underscore preds. Let's have a look at those. And again, it's a it's a numpy vector um, of length 12 with all the same values in it, and that value happens to be the last historical value that we saw within our time series. So let's plot that. And this is what you get. Okay, so if we compare that to our um, mean forecast, you might think that that is possibly a, a better method for forecasting our data because it's more at the current level of the data. Now, we suspect from our previous analysis that this is very seasonal data. Um, so rather than just using a simple naive method, what we could do is use something called seasonal naive. So seasonal naive goes a little bit further. And instead of just bringing the previous value forward, it brings the previous 12 values forward from the previous year and applies them to, to this year. So for example, if we wanted to forecast January's arrival rate, we would use the previous value from last January. If we wanted to forecast February, we would use last February. If we wanted to use March, we would use last March and so on. So it's taking the previous 12 months and bringing it forward. And then if you were predicting 24 months, you would still use the last 12 months within your time series. So you would get a repeating pattern going further forward into the future. So that's contained within the baseline um, module as well. Let's just import that. Exactly the same three steps, apart from uh, when we create our seasonal naive class, um, there is a, um, an argument to our init method, which is um, the period. So that, in this case, this is monthly data, so we'll pass in the period of 12. If this was uh, weekly data, we would pass in 7, for example. So let's run that. Okay, and have a look at SMF prepped, which contains our data. So now we have some variation in our data. We can see that it starts at 350, which was the previous um, 12 months ago, um, and it goes all the way up to the, to the final value. Now, if we put the horizon to 24 months and run it, what we should see is this first block is then repeated. So that's what seasonal naive is doing. Nothing clever, it's just taking the previous seasonal period and bringing it forward. Set that back to 12 for comparison. Um, not sure why that's there. Okay, so the drift method. So all of those methods kind of ignore trend within the data either increasing or decreasing. So another variant on the naive forecast is to have a naive forecast with drift. Um, so that's kind of taking the, 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 the final value in the series and applying um, a gradient to it. So when you take one step forward, it's the previous value plus a gradient. So there's a really simple way to, to think of how drift works. So if you take the first value in the time series and the last value within the time series and draw a straight line between the two of them, that gives you your model that you've fitted to the data. So then any extrapolation is just extending that line further into the future. So that looks a bit like this mathematically. 
So our forecast is the, the final value in the series um, plus whatever horizon you're going over. Um, and then this, this quantity here represents the gradient in the data. So it's the final value in the series minus um, the, uh, the first value divided by the number of observations minus one. And that gives you the average change you've seen over the, over the time series. So that I think is probably easier to, to visualize rather than understand mathematically. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll import the drift class from the baseline function, uh, baseline module. We'll create it, very straightforward, no parameters. We've stored the predictions within DRF preds, which we'll just have a quick look at. And you can see that these are gradually uh, getting larger over time. And then if we plot that, we're also going to plot um, the fitted values. These are the in-sample values that we've fitted. Um, so we've got three things plotted here. We've got um, the training data, which is our original raw arrival rate data. This um, blue uh, dotted line is our model. That's what we fitted to that data. So in some ways, it's quite a poor fit because there's a lot of data below it, far more data below that line than above it. But you can see that goes from the first point in the series all the way up to the final point. And then the extrapolation is simply extending that, that line in, into the future. And that's the drift forecast. So those represent the most common baseline methods you will see. So we looked at four of those. We looked at the average forecast, which in this case I would say is a very poor forecast. Naive forecast one, which is a very popular and common, and common forecast for people who work in forecasting. Seasonal naive, which you would use if you think your data is seasonal. And then naive with drift, which may be appropriate if you think there is a there was an upward or downwards trend within your data. So what we've not been able to do is quantitatively decide which of those baselines is the appropriate model to use. So we're now going to move on to looking at measuring forecast error and evaluating your forecasts. And that's going to give us some tools to help us pick which of these baseline models we should use. And they're the same tools that you would then use to compare more complex methods to these baselines. But we're going to do it with baselines because that keeps things simple and allows us to focus on the tools themselves instead of the complex methods that we might use.